You know that feeling when you're on vacation and you keep running into the same people? No matter where you go, the pub, the bar, the gym, the beach, always that same person that you keep seeing again and again? Well, I guess I had that sensation when I kept running into these things. This very small, quaint little German town. There's really something to be said for driving through these. This is a fairly the biggest city I've seen for in a while. You would not think there would be a huge underground bunker complex out here. But of course, that's exactly why they put it here. There's something I want to show you that you have never seen and most of you probably have never even heard of. This is an air raid shelter built by a relatively famous architect. That. And that is a Winkeltorn, a very specialized air raid shelter built and designed during World War II. Also referred to as a Hochbunker, Spitzbunker, Talbunker, Peakbunker. You get the idea. During the war, the high command was posted here ever since 1939, but there was only one heavy air raid with 600 well, Allied bombers, 100 some 28 civilians were killed, almost no damage to the bunkers. And I wanted to go inside this thing, but I have no idea how or where the bloody door is, which is really annoying me. This is where the door should have been. These shelters were designed by the German architect Leo Winkel, who came up with the idea already in 1934. The idea was that tall, pointy, slender construction would make it hard for a bomb to hit the target. And if it would, the bomb would slide off to the sloped sides, keeping it from detonating at least until it reached the ground, where the walls were at their thickest. And it does have a pretty damn good track record. Only two cases were known where a Winkelton were hit and breached. I figured that was it. And I drove down the street and found another one that had been turned into a museum, which is awesome. You get the thickness of the walls. And I think this is an interesting design because it's sloping on the outside and you have extra slopes that look like they are at more of a slope on the inside than outside, which would lend to the reinforcing of the bunker. I'm guessing we're looking at, I would imagine it also gets slightly thicker as we go up than down. So here's the outside. So we're still looking at a good meter of thickness. in this tower, you would cram 200 people in there. Here you see all the air filtration units. And by the way, before you ask, yes, there was one bathroom. This is the pipe from the toilet, and that's really important. And of course, if the diesel air condition and everything air went out, you had the hand crank, which is very important. But for the brown tower on the base, this is something else. And these are all filters for the air. Just like any other bunker, you would need a filter system. And of course, the benches were round. I've seen a lot of bunkers in my time. I've never seen a Winkel Tower. There was a hundred of these built during the war, 19 of them here, but none of them were bombed or hit by uh, airplanes during the war. Unfortunately, after the war, most of them were blown up, uh, destroyed. To protect the door, and then you go up. Now let's go up. The most, or at least, graceful manner I can find. Now, I don't know if there's a door here. There was a door here. Originally, I guess. Ah, this is where the fun stops. If you look at this. And there was the most important part when people are bombing you is that you have a big toilet.
but it's an iconic design and he had the patent for it, I will say that. You could do a little design, you could paint it, you can make more of these and turn them into, I don't know, a miniature restaurant. During the war about 200 of these and 16 different designs were built, but after the war most of them were destroyed, so I figure, well, I've seen two, I'm a lucky man, that has to be it, and I went merrily on my way down the road. So I'm looking around Sussan, <laughs> and I didn't even see it. It's not like it's inconspicuous, let's just be honest here. I did not even see the damn thing from the road, and I'm the road is 10 feet away. Here's another one. I'm guessing it's not open, but we can go have a see. All right, so of course they fenced it in, but this is interesting. Look at this. Well, maybe it's hard to see. There is a very distinct impact here and also there. You can see the rebar sticking. You can see the rebar sticking out of the side. They tried to blow up a lot of these after the war, and I don't know if that's what this is. That's why there's these impacts, or it's very hard to tell, honestly. Base of the tower. I'm certain this did not damage the structure in a way that it's not structurally sound, but obviously can't get in. Let's have a little bit more of a look, see what's around here. Around 200 different Winkeltuons were built, about 16 different types of construction. The largest, like I said, could hold up to 600 people. More of them were in the 200 people range. Every tower had its own appointed air raid commander or responsible civilian who was in charge. Now the first tests were done by the Luftwaffe Test Center at Recklin, already in the beginning of 1936, way before the outbreak of war. The towers withstood the testing to full satisfaction of the German army, and Winkel was awarded the contract. 1937, the first non-test versions were built in Duisburg. As most of them were blown up and destroyed after the war, few of them were preserved as landmarks and as you can tell, have very interesting designs of paint and plants growing around them. But still, it is a rarity. And you know I have a knack for finding things or running into them, so that could not possibly be the end of it. Interesting. I'm in a small town in Germany called uh, Kaiserslautern. It's probably not that small, I really have no idea. I've never been here before, there's also an American base. Um, where I wanted to do my laundry because on long trips you need to do laundry. However, in this very small town that I've never been in, that I happened to drive through, as I drove down the street, a winkle to one. And down there, another one. There's only 21 of these left in Germany. And I guess we've seen four of them now. That's just, I think that's really cool that it actually. And it looks like they're having new construction all around it. So, or both of them. And they're leaving them in place, which is really, really very cool. Oh, this looks like there's little shutters or slits up top, which I don't understand. Because there was not in the ones we saw in Sussan. But, just the fun things of driving through small towns in Germany, in Europe, you never know what you come across. And I guess we come past a bit of uh, architecture here. It's just fun as you drive through Europe and uh, all historic places you run into things that you know, you're, you're kind of lucky to see from an architectural point of view, they shouldn't exist, there's only 21 of them left, and 
Here's two more. I'm not going to dedicate the rest of my life to seeing the rest, but it's kind of neat. And obviously it's sitting here close to an American barracks where there was probably a German barracks at the time. Back on the road. Got to go uh, look at that. Got to go visit the Maginot Line and the Siegfried Line. See what we'll find out there. But these we found on the way. <laughs>